What is prone ventilation? What's its physiology? How do we do it in practice? What are its adverse effect? Watch till the end to know the full picture. J.B. West built on a gravitational model of ventilation and perfusion. This assumes that capillary blood flow to the alveolus is dependent on the pressure of the gas within the alveolus. In the upright position, ventilation and perfusion both increase from the top to the bottom of the lung. This is attributed to the effect of gravity. For ideal gas exchange, the ventilation and perfusion to each alveolus should be matched, giving exactly the right amount of ventilation perfusion to fully oxygenate all the passing blood. That is, a ventilation perfusion ratio is equal to 1. However, for our lungs in health, it's 0.8. In bases, it's 0.6 and it increases till apex to 3. Similar effects are seen also in supine position. This is a schematic representation of vertical pleural pressure distribution in the recumbent supine and prone position. That was okay in health. But in ARDS, the dependent area becomes consolidated. This results in the best perfused area not getting ventilation. The mechanisms by which prone position improves oxygenation include better aeration and ventilation in the most vertebral parts of the lung, which continue to receive most of the pulmonary blood flow, reducing the intrapulmonary shunt in the vertebral parts of the lung. The aeration and the ventilation to perfusion ratios distribution are more homogeneously distributed throughout the lung in during prone position. Prone positioning dampens lung stress and strain stemming from mechanical ventilation, by improved lung compliance and reduction in transpulmonary driving pressure. Combined with a moderate level of PEEP, prone positioning may limit mechanical power. Facilitating respiratory secretions drainage and maintaining or even improving hemodynamics are other important additional beneficial effects of prone positioning in patients with ARDS. Schematic representation of strain stress distribution and its impact on alveolar size distribution between the supine and prone position. The slinky effect of a triangular-shaped spring suspended from its apex, supine position, causes higher strain and larger variation in the distribution of alveolar sizes due to the effects of gravity and a steeper stress production during mechanical inspiration in the upper lung regions. In contrast, suspending the spring by its base across a wider surface area, prone position, produces a more even strain and more homogeneous distribution of alveolar size that lessens inhomogeneity in stress development throughout the lungs during mechanical inspiration. The most important evidence in proning is ProSiva. This trial was unique compared to prior studies given its focus on one. Persistent moderate severe ARDS after a 12 to 24 hours period of optimization, too. Greater time spent sustained in the prone position, and finally a lower thresholds for terminating daily prone sessions. 16% absolute reduction in mortality was one of the most important positive findings seen in any critical care trial. So, how to prone? Absolute or relative contraindications for proning are Severe hemodynamic instability, life-threatening arrhythmia, evidence of elevated intracranial, elevated intraocular or intra-abdominal pressures, seizure, multiple trauma, facial, chest, spine or pelvic fractures, tracheotomy less than 24 h old, recent cardiothoracic surgery and open abdominal wound. Indication as it should be done early in the course of moderate to severe ARDS in the presence of persisting hypoxemia after adjusting mechanical ventilation settings and particularly PEEP level. If after stabilization PF ratio is still less than 150 we can go ahead with prone. Team huddle and briefing prior to proning procedure. Briefing to define each person's role and what they need to do. Take prevention for corneal ulcerations, skin injuries, securing ET tubes, drains, catheters. Take note of all major infusions especially vasopressors. These are the important points to note in pre-proning period. Preferably you can use a checklist prior to proning. For proning we need a team of at least 4 to 6 people. More may be required if patient is on ECMO or RRT. Head cushion and thoracic supports should be arranged. You can use the specially designed ones like these or use standard pillows also. Clamp closed suction system and the Riles tube. You may use the Bane circuit and remove from the ventilator during this time to prevent disconnections while proning. Remove all monitor cables. Shift the patient to the side they have the central venous access as shown here. 
Clean the bed and put fresh sheets. Make the proning. Attach monitors and ventilator immediately. During the proning period, reevaluate ventilator settings. PEEP, FiO2, tidal volume. Adapt the sedation and paralysis. Alternating give head, arms, eyes and skin care. Monitor for deterioration. What should be the duration of prone position? It should preferably be for 16 to 18 hours. Longer hours are avoided, as the risk of complications is high. Adverse events during proning. Various complications can occur during prone positioning such as device displacement, vomiting, loss of venous access, accidental extubation, endotracheal tube displacement and obstruction, hemodynamic instability, brachial plexus injury and pressure sores. Pressure ulcers are mainly observed on face and anterior part of the thorax. It is likely that all complications may be avoided with staff training and collaboration. Before we summarize, if you are finding our videos helpful, do give us a like. So first identify the patient most likely to benefit from proning. Always have a team with a team leader. Assign duties to each member. Checklist to be maintained. Prone. Surveillance can be done with SpO2 and invasive arterial pressure. We can do 2 to 3 arterial blood gas in between to change the ventilatory setting. Supine the patient after 16 to 18 hours and monitor the changes. Observe and document any adverse events. Thank you.